everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Stinky Dragon. We are doing a Between the Tales episode. As always, I am your Dungeon Master, Gustavo Sorolla, and I do not have an arrow to hit the party with today. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. I'm reloading. I don't like that. You need to do... I don't care if we're doing beat behind the Between the Tales. You need to still need to do your spooky voice. It that really freaks right. me out when he was like, Hi, I'm Gus. Yeah, it's like little. normal Gus voice. <laughs> Very jarring. <laughs> Welcome to Between the Tales. Thank you. Sorry, no, don't give us like a bunch of rhymes and uh, alliterations. <laughs> ahead, I'm guys. your dungeon master, uh, but I'm not a spellcaster. Hey. hey, that's a rhyme. Okay. There you go. Uh, I'll tell you what, we, I don't have an arrow to hit you guys with. Introduce yourselves real fast. I'm sorry, just to be safe. Okay. No. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh Duality there, there of man. <laughs> I'm Barbara Dunkelman, and I play Elga Von Brath, the half-elf vampire barbarian who maybe has something new to tell the group about what she has today on what? Between the Tales. Oh, interesting. Oh. Wow. Hi, I'm Blaine Gibson. I play Chip Haney, and I'm a... Uh, we'll do, do, are we leveling up? rogue. I'm a tiefling rogue, and I'm a, a level between levels. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm Chris Damaris, and I play Barney Farney, the uh, human cleric, and uh, I'm level six because we leveling up uh, before. <laughs> right? That's as smooth as butter. This is smooth. I think, I think we're just, this none of us are sure so, if we're allowed to say that we leveled up before can, recording this. No one's going to get mad at you if you do. We can, we can edit stuff. It's, we can get know, rid of it's, it. It's more about like the audience and their like suspension of disbelief. Like, do we say like, oh, we're getting level six. And then we go, yay. So, you know, I, I applaud your caution. I applaud your care. That's care. Mm -hmm. That's concern. Care so much. Um, yeah, you do. And I'm John, and I care too much about my character, Matty Confucius, who is an Eric Cochran ghost monk. And I'm excited for our episode today. Yeah. Nice. Well, since we don't have an arrow, I'm going to ask one question. And uh, whichever one of you thinks you can answer it, uh, raise your hand. I can, I can see everyone from, from my vantage point. And uh, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, if, if to, you, if you raise your hand, I'm going to call on you to try to answer the question. Oh. Okay. Who can accurately and succinctly recall the previous episode in less than 30 seconds? John's hand went shot up. Okay, John, ready, set, go. So in our last episode, we find ourselves back on Glurb where the Mould was brought out of or came out of the Underglobula with us um, and was uh, we were confronting this phoenix who was trying to use the Mould and the Mould's like, nah, you ain't gonna use me, fool. And so then uh, Eddie, Eddie? Eddie. Yep. Eddie shows up Ed, and, Ed and Eddie. is like, yeah, Ed, Ed and Eddie show up from the classic <laughs> Nickelodeon show. It's crazy. And they tried to, he tried to be like, I'm the boss and the Sphinx, Sphinx, saying it. 30 seconds. Um, so did he accomplish it? If he didn't I was do it doing good, seconds? right? I was doing good. You started going on tangents with Cartoon Network and stuff. The reason yeah. I hesitated, because I was like, I don't know if I can do it in 30 seconds. It's a tall order. Can one of the other three raise their hand if they could take over from there? Blaine, hand up. Okay, so the Sphinx and Eddie decide to get into a fight. Uh, the Sphinx supposedly kills Eddie. We have to fight the Sphinx, uh, and we're joined by Mould. Uh, we do a pretty good job, and then I think ultimately the Sphinx passes away. Eddie comes back because the Sphinx has teleportation abilities. So then Eddie then casts a curse on the Mould and takes control of it, and we are left no not knowing whether or not the Mould will turn to Eddie or what. And uh, it was a whole awful thing. The snail city was under attack. Time. I think Hexel died. Time. <laughs> you, missed, you missed one you thing. You forgot the dragon, the Vesper vein. Dang it. Also, it wasn't Hexel. It was the blob who uh, died, not Hexel. Hexel's still alive? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. It was Hexel's mom? I thought that was a joke. Progenitor? But, uh, yeah. Progenitor. <laughs> yes. They use different terminology. For bonus points, Chris or Barbara... Do either of you know where Eddie was uh, vanquished to temporarily by the Phoenix? Vanquished to? Yeah. Vanished. Was it Vania? No. He mentioned where he came back from. We've been there. Oh, uh, 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 Pyroa? There it is. Pyroa. <sighs> so no one was able to get the entire thing in 36. That, that, that's a tall order 
Uh, I was keeping track here, and I think John got the most story beats in the he 30 seconds. He got the most seconds. detail, absolutely. Yeah. So, I, so I, get to, uh, I get to go up one extra level than everybody else, right? Well, no, you do get a reward, though. Oh. You're going to get uh, a feat. Or I should <gasps> say Matid gets a feat. Hey. Matid will gain access to the Keen Mind feat. You can go ahead and wow, add that to your character. Wow, that's a big reward. Your character that sheet. Is. Yeah. That actually is huge. Yeah, it gives you intelligence plus one. You always know north. You always know how many hours are left till sunrise or sunset, and you can recall anything in the last month. What in the heck? I didn't know that those were the stakes. So does this mean if John asks a question about like something we saw or did, like you'll have to tell him? Because I might make, it, make a check with advantage, you know? It makes sense that the bird knows which way is north. That's true. Character. Hey, good news, everybody. My intelligence modifier is now plus one. <laughs> that's actually probably for the best that john got it then yeah that's huge that's very useful excellent excellent work john slash matid i try it helps that we just <laughs> recorded that episode <laughs> that, what was that was that was that yesterday that was yesterday yeah, that was yesterday. Like yesterday all right let's go ahead and uh, dive into this tale everyone go ahead and roll me a perception check oh and uh everyone can take a long rest as well <gasps> yay thank goodness my health and my rages were minimal <laughs> you refilled on rage you topped up i topped up on my rage which i also have now a fourth rage spot since Ooh. we leveled up I, I rolled a 23 for elga 10 for barney 17 19 all right we'll start with mr barney farney mr farney you feel your body gently rocking back and forth and smell burnt toast. Oh, no, not again. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, God. You open your eyes and see you're seated at a booth table aboard a dining car. The table is set with eggs, bacon, toast, jam, tea, and coffee. On the other side of the booth is a plump man sipping on tea through his feathery mustache. Matid and Chip, aside from Inspector Weezer and, you know, your party, uh, this particular cozy car is vacant of people. Just empty tables and the undertones of clinking railway below. Elga, with your advanced perception powers, you peer out the car window, it's cracked open, and you take a note of the landscape. No longer is it teeming with far-reaching fields of fungi. Instead, you see leafless trees and frostbitten woods cloaked in mist. Oh. Spooky. Ah, oh, awake just in time for breakfast, I see. Well, tuck in. You all must be knackered from the past few days. Anyone fancy a copper? All copper, kappa. Yeah, so the, the table in front of you, like I said, is set with all kinds of uh, breakfast foods, eggs, bacon, toast, jam, tea, coffee, and there's a silver cart next to the table uh, with additional delicacies if anybody is uh, so inclined. Uh, I'm curious, do you have any blood pudding? Oh, you look mm. over, uh, we Weezer points at the cart, and there, sure enough, there's a dish of crimson blood pudding. Oh, we're I back with take, him. Excuse yeah, so, me, so I'm finished here. ordering my meal. I will take seven, please. <laughs> <laughs> Growing girl. Dis appears walking from behind a counter uh, and begins removing blood pudding from the cart and putting it in front of you, Elga. Dis, what are you doing here? Do you work on every train that we are ever on in the story? <laughs> <laughs> That's my life. Settling back and forth uh, across all of Groteth. Would that be anything else? Perhaps some uh, kipper tuna pate for uh, your feline friend there? Jacques would prefer some tata if you have some. Mm, very good. Just excuses himself, leaves the room for uh, a moment, then returns with a uh, small plate of uh, tartare. Oh, c'est magnifique. Can I perceive, like, how is Weezer towards us now? I feel like we've had, like, ups and downs with Chief Inspector Weezer. I'm going to actually challenge you, Blaine. Have Chip find out. Yeah. I feel like Chip's like such a um, uh, like a per people person. Oh. He would like he would totally be like trying to figure it out actually by talking to this person. <laughs> okay, Gus, is that what you want? Yeah, make a um, you can make an insight check. You can try to have a conversation with him. It's totally up to you. The sky's the limit. Uh, 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 hey, the, the Chief Inspector Weezer, uh, how are you? The Chief. <laughs> Weezer uh, dabs at his uh, his mouth uh, and his mustache with a napkin to clear crumbs. <clears throat> very good, very good. Interested to hear an update from you all since we last parted ways. Yeah, I, how, do, 
Do you do you like me? Check <laughs> check yes or no. <laughs> Are we good, bro? <laughs> Make an insight check for me, please. Right. I have a minus one on this, so it's not gonna go well. Seven. <laughs> You think uh, Chief Inspector Weir is giving you serious side eye? <gasps> so that's not good. Hmm. How's the investigation going? <laughs> I like this so much. Like how? Like we've been doing our stuff on our end, and we can update you. But like, how? Do you got any new clues over there? Hey, you think as being the Chief Inspector, you would maybe be finding stuff out faster than we are? Yeah, if you what are the good little at your one job. said. Well, when we last split up, you were taking over the investigation and heading to Glurb in pursuit of this phoenix, and I was returning to Atro City with our prisoners. Yeah. Right then. So what's the latest on your investigation, Mr. Haney? What's going on with our prisoners there, uh, Weezer? <laughs> well, first of all, I'm happy to see that you're all right. I received an anonymous cryptic note that said something about you four needing help in Glurb. So I boarded a train at once, and when I arrived, half the village was petrified into gemstones, and you four were knocked out cold. That was two days ago. Oh. I simply can't make sense of the rest of this note, but perhaps one of you can. Do you have it with you? Yeah, he holds out a small scrap of paper in front of him. Did Elga look at it? Yeah. He sees you reaching for it, Elga, and uh, he hands it over in your direction. You look at it, and the first two lines of the note are written in common, but the rest of it is in a language I don't think you understand. Looking at your languages... I have common, elvish, and goblin. No, you do not understand it, but you understand the first two lines. The first two lines say, Your foursome of friends are in need of your aid. To glurb you should hasten before it's too late. Oh. It doesn't, doesn't rhyme. So I read the first two lines, but do you guys know, anyone know what the rest of these words say? And I hold it up to the rest of the party. I'll take a gander. Chip takes a look at it, and yeah, the words do make sense to, to Chip. Yeah, he recognizes it as Thieves' Cat. Oh. Do I recognize his handwriting? Perhaps something I found in my fanny pack a few whiles ago? Make a... Um, we'll call it an intelligence check. Oh, please pass this old chip. Come on, chip. Where's the intelligence? I'm already failing. There it is. Okay, 18. It does not look similar to you. I, uh, I was hoping it was mm. a note from my wife. Okay, uh, what, is the, what is the same thing as can't? If you want to send it to me in a Slack message, I can read it to the group. Oh, that you sounds. Know, really, that, that's a great idea. I'm going to really send keep it to you. It for the it's characters. interesting that someone is like trying to protect us and is aware of what we're doing, but we don't know who it is or like what their motive is for wanting to like... I don't know. Keep us out of trouble. You got a, a benefactor looking over you. Maybe we it's all bad. have a uh, we have a very rich aunt who's uh, taking care of us. <laughs> you never know. I will say I'm gonna alter something I said slightly a little while ago. Okay. So when you asked me if you rec if you recognized the handwriting, I assumed you were comparing it to the one you received in your bum bag that we talked about a couple episodes ago. Yes. While the two are not the same handwriting. You do, however, recognize that this letter you have now, written in Thieves' Cant, is in the penmanship of your missing wife, Carol. No! 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 Very emotional right now. <clears throat> got, a wife, got a note from my wife here. I'm just going to read it to the group. <laughs> Uh, it's a, you're gonna hear the first part again, but I'll, I'll read you the rest of it. Your foursome of friends are in need of your aid. To glurb, you should hasten before it's too late. That doesn't rhyme. That's okay, honey. I forgive you. The <laughs> plans of Eddie are more than just murder. His pullings of threads will unravel the world further. If everyone knew of the secrets he scours, then Bedlam would follow and quickly devour. Again, the son of rhyme, sweetheart. The key to his quandary is finding the man whose name you all know, but kept secret to clans. And then it's got a, a from C, which is my wife, Carol. Connie, please come home. I miss you so much. Huh. So as you can see, I can make neither heads nor tails of this note. Clearly, despite my status as chief inspector, I need your help in solving this mystery. 
So my instinct right now is the plans of Eddie are more than just murder. His pulling of threads will unravel the world further. So that means that he definitely had something to do with Wolfman's murder. And I think he's trying to divide the worlds apart because that was the mm. first step in making sure that the that union that all of the different parts of Groteth had come to agree upon. The peace treaty. Right. There it is. Broken. I was going to ask. Yeah. That's spelled P-I-E-C-E. -E. Yeah, look at that. If everyone knew of the secrets he scours, then Bedlam would follow and quickly devour. So it's like he's got some sort of leverage against the people that would like, it would be like a bomb dropped on him. I wonder if it's a, like like something to do with Ma and Pa. Do we know, because mm. at the end of that note, as Chip read, as he said in, to all of us, I assume, was uh, something about someone's name we know that we... The, the key to this quandary is finding the man whose name you all know but kept secret to clans. Is that Paul? Is that perhaps somebody that the uh, original founders know of the names? That's why Eddie keeps uh, inquiring to the people like Blob uh, about uh, what else happened on that day or who else was there. Hmm. It's just like, is this Phoenix? person that we know of that we were trying to like? I, I, uh, quick, everybody what just about say the alchemist. Al everybody alchemist. just say every name you know right now, and then we'll just get to go through some. Could maybe be something Robert. Will the alchemist. We went by the alchemist, but then we found out his name. Robert. Esteban. Yes. Well, it would seem you all have your own thoughts and instincts regarding this investigation. It's settled then. I'd like to deputize all of you as city official lawful detectives. Oh, oh my goodness. He pulls out four silver badges that read C-O-L-D on them. I am so humbled. I unfortunately will have to decline. Decline? Yes. I have other business I must attend to. But oh. I'm beyond honored. What other business do you have to attend to? I feel like this is the only thing we're doing right now, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to, I need to find my, my family. Well, as a city official lawful detective, you would gain access to the city's archives, which would perhaps aid you in whatever other investigations you may be pursuing. Oh, Barney, microfiche, huh? On top of that, the position comes with a stipend of 10 gold pieces per week. Is that we, back pay? Is, yeah, I was about to ask, is that the back pay? <laughs> well, I, I mean, we're in a new quarter, the whole thing rolled over, budgets are getting realigned and reallocated. Uh, so yeah, got to get their uh, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm sure. going to need to talk to HR about this. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of health benefits do we get? Yeah, do you have any stock options or anything like that? Stock options? You know, Dagger had some pretty good retirement plans. Are you able to compete with that? <laughs> do we you match? A <laughs> Do we get those 10 gold pieces now? Sure, you can get them now. Why not? Or shaking down Weezer. Oh, uh, yeah, he pulls out a, a, a medium-sized purse, undoes the, the string at the top, reaches in, and pulls out four smaller purses and hands one to each of you. Each with 10 gold pieces? Purses no, yeah. all the way each down. Each purse has actually four more small no, gold yeah, purses No, each purse it. has 10 purses inside of it, and each of those what? purses has one gold piece in it. <laughs> This isn't a very elaborate way of paying us. You only needed the one purse. I will not stand for this persecution. Oh. What you don't know is uh, Weezer's partner makes the purses and sells them to uh, the city at an insane markup. Uh, Probably because you need one right. purse per coin. <laughs> Everybody has to have their side hustle. What else uh, comes with being one of these cold members? You'll be assigned to this investigation officially. Your first task, uncover the identity of the individual to whom this letter is referring. And of course, find them. Do we get a gun? <laughs> he, he was like, I'm out. And then he's like, actually, I want a gun. <laughs> but he wants one of those like old pistols from like the 1980s. <laughs> Flintlock. It only fires one shot and you have to yeah. like. <laughs> yep. Gus, what does Inspector C Weezer say to that? A, a gun? I I don't I don't know what that is. So no. It's it's a it's a pastry from where he comes from. He's just wondering. He's a little hungry. Yes. Ah, I see. I see. Uh, no. Um, just these badges, I'm afraid. But you can put those on right away. 
So, Weezer, catch me up here. You said that you were responsible for the transportation of the criminals. Eddie was in your possession at one point, was he not? We had captured him, or am I thinking of a different time when we had him? I don't think you had captured Eddie. You must be thinking of someone else. That I think that that was like way long ago. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you ran into, or you saw Eddie at the top of the Temple of Antique. Right. But then Eddie was, when you, you know, you lost consciousness when you came to you saw the fire in the distance that's where you all were previously got it so then i want to go back to the ways that you found us you say you found us in a state of unconscious it's been two days and half of the glorbian a place was covered in gemstones do, do you know what why why it was left in that sort of state so you say gemstones too <laughs> i wasn't sure if i was hearing things correctly I learned to say it from my very good friend Zamuld. I'm a big fan of this large, <laughs> shiny creature. I thought that's all we know about Gems. Before he became evil. Well, when I arrived in Glab, the whole scene was in disarray. We found Hexel in the Blob's remains. In fact, we are transporting the Blob's remains on this very train right now, along with Hexel. We're taking them to Parish to give the Blob a proper send-off. Oh, and Hexel was uh, touched by the mold, right? And weren't they turned into the a The blob was. The, the blob. blob was. Okay, I yeah. thought one was like splattered and then the other one was gamified. No, blob was gamified. Got it. Well, they, they might have a fighting chance. Anyway, amongst the rest of the chaos, uh, I found you four passed out cold. And so I got help loading you up on the train and here you are. Did you happen to collect any Gemstones worth over 500 gold? <laughs> I don't think so. Most of the gemstones, I mean gemstones, we found were like shards. Nothing really of substantial value anyway. Well, shucks. Barney, didn't you already find one worth over 500 that we already used for what you needed? Well, I have a question. Did it disappear after I use it? Is it like a one-time use thing? You look through your items and uh, you no longer find it. It is not in your possession. When you summoned the Vesper Vein, it did not disappear. However, you do not seem to have that gem you know, amongst your personal items. Hmm. I don't know where it went. Maybe you left it there after we passed it. Well, it was, it was Hexel's. So, you know, last we saw, Eddie was uh, running away with mold. Do you know much about mold and like, I mean, is, are they, are they turned now? Are they, are they the a bad guy? Mold? What is that? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Mold was a big old like crystal dude. Uh, he was very friendly and amicable until Eddie, uh, you said some fancy blurble gurble talk and it seems like he is now a bad guy. Very formidable foe. I think Eddie winter soldiered Mold. That makes sense. <gasps> <laughs> like unlocked because he was, it was bad probably. And then he just reinforce that or he made no that. i think i think eddie had a book with the words needed to control mold mm. and, and and that's what eddie was uh spouting flippantly uh during longing rusted 17 daybreak furnace <laughs> yeah. nine, <laughs> nine, nine except, orange, one, not that, except it was like flubble glubble blah blah blah, blah. boil and trouble <laughs> yeah it was like literal baby talk but you know. <laughs> goo goo get get. <laughs> we'll kill everyone. <laughs> Who's a burble gerbil? Who's so a burble gerbil? This year train's going to Vania, am I right? Parish. Parish. Gotcha. And then like, what's next on the docket? Where are we going to like, I don't know, Disney World or something? <laughs> As newly deputized officers of COLD, I'd be interested to hear your instincts on where you think the investigation is leading next. What clues or suspects have you all drummed up? Mm. Well, I mean, we probably want to find Eddie based off this note saying that he's basically a danger to everything and everyone. But I'm also very curious if, uh, you know, maybe Carol will be somewhere. Chip's wife, who clearly is alive and not dead as we all assumed. Maybe yeah. she can help us. I told you she wasn't dead. I told you I didn't kill her. So, to bring it back to information that we know at this point, Chip recognized in this note that was Carol. But when Chip checked the bum bag letter, am I remembering incorrectly? And Chip didn't re didn't recognize that as Carol. Yeah. That's a good so then point. there is, in fact, somebody other than Carol, even though 
Did we see Carol in the market at in Carcassook? We Someone bumped into me, and that was how a note or letter got snuck into my bum bag. The same one that 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 can speak to you, or another one? I thought I thought that one was like an actual note from Carol. Shucks. I think it was. I think that's something that got bumped into him. Was that we a don't month ago, Gus? <laughs> longer than that, probably. In game. In game. In game. Oh, in game. Man, it's been a while. I don't know if it's been a month necessarily, but it has then, been. Then uh, spill the a beans, while. Gustavo. Tell me yeah. the answers. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got keen insight. I got keen mind now. No, okay. It starts now. What? <sighs> this is this is the starting point. Boo. I'm I'm <laughs> listening now. I'm listening and I'm watching and I'm taking in everything. There you Your go. Your bird ears are open. The bird brain. We do not have ears. The bird brain. <laughs> the holes on the side of your skull. Okay, so yeah, can we get clarification on what's been Carol and what hasn't been? <laughs> yeah, you had you were bumped into in the market in Carcassook and you had a note put into your position that was signed as being from Carol. Okay. Do you still have that note? I mean, I don't think in my inventory, but I definitely have the letters of fancy talk, whatever they were called. I just want, I'm just curious if when you got that note, I'm just trying to like, I'm now I'm like, I feel like we need a cork board with strings and, and pins and everything. Hey, Sylvia. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. While we're talking about people we're looking for, all this discussion has reminded me that the alchemist was supposed to meet me in Astro City. But he and his family never arrived. What? Oh, would that have been because they were in? They were uh, inside of coffins inside of Kakusu. You all last saw them, yeah, there, and then you freed them, and then they left the Pyramid of Antique, heading back to Atra City. So this is them having left to go to Atra City from that, and they didn't. They didn't arrive where Weezer was expecting them. Correct. Mm. Okay. Sorry. Do you have any idea where the alchemist could be? I'm sorry. We've been really busy dealing with a very fiery flying cat. Uh, so where did the alchemist go? Yeah, it is, uh, that's not something we are privy to. Hmm. Do we not know where he went? Because we thought, did he? We found him in those like tombs, right? Sarcophaga. Yeah. Yep. He walked into the sunset. I don't know if that's literal. Like he like literally <laughs> walked into the sun. <laughs> I'm starting to think that uh, us doing a small mini campaign of our old characters in order to promote our really cool new puppet show in the middle of this campaign was not the best for our memories of understanding this no. the, the plot of this mystery like murder story. <laughs> That's why this is a, a good time to have it between the tails to kind of <laughs> review Refresh. all of that and yeah. yeah get us back up to speed make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the alchemist is missing between leaving Carcassook and getting back to Atro City. Did not meet up with Weezer. Correct. Chip has a note that Chip got in that little piece of paper from another a mysterious person we don't know. Who? What? What was it? What was the that got sent to you with that? That with that little like sending note thing? Oh. Do you remember what the message was? Yeah, yeah. yeah that you wrote was, it down, I think, right? Okay, so that was called the Cartus Dei. Is that what you're talking about? The yeah. other letters? Yes. Yes. Okay, but that being said, I do have that letter, John. I mean, my deed, I got the letter. Do you want me to read it to you? Uh, it's, it's more so that I wanted to see if you would compare the uh, the penmanship is really yeah. what I was wondering. Is it? Uh, I also is... just miss my, my wife's <laughs> voice, you know? Two chip from Carol. Headdress is only the beginning. He has the book of daybreak. Go to Lheim's library. Find the book of Evenfall. My talons, spelled T-A-L-O-N-S, lie elsewhere. Our love cannot be sheathed. Yes, a gift lies in the stars. Okay, and so that was that was from Carol. Yeah. And then you got we got a mysterious note in your carta de ayas that. Do you See. remember what that said? Uh, I'll refresh your memory. Thank you. You received a letter that said, "I'm amongst the dead now." That's right. Oh, that was from the carta de ayas, and that I didn't yeah. recognize the handwriting on. And, and yeah. we haven't resolved what that was referring to. Maybe that, I think I want to say that that has something to do with the alchemist. Alchemist. Could that be a reference to Vania? The, 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 is that maybe the undead? Yeah. Oh, yeah. like where, where, where they're located physically, not Amongst like the dead. Yes. Yeah, not is the, like... Is the alchemist going to be like a Princess Peach thing where you have to just keep saving this fool from everybody <laughs> who keeps just... Make a wisdom check for me, please. Okay, you got it. Here this, is a, this is a Blaine wisdom check. I want. So what's Blaine's modifier <laughs> wisdom? It's a eleven. It's, it's probably the same as Chip minus one. <laughs> so you rolled a twelve, got an eleven. You vaguely remember Francesca telling you that this 
might be from her family. Francesca, of course. Mother of Henry. The Cartes? Yes. Okay. Weezer, you know, is listening to all of this and says, Huh, so the alchemist is dead? That can't be good at all. I don't okay. think he is. It's I don't a- think so. I think he's just hanging with people who are. Yeah, uh-huh. he's doing uh-huh. a monster do you have mash. A prob- do you have a problem with that? Is that the problem with you? Do you, do you not think that people should be hanging oh, with those who are dead? Oh, huh? Mati, Mati, calm down. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, not not at all. It's just, just that he was very much alive last time I saw him. And once you make that transition to the other side, uh, things change. And I'm just very keen on finding him and... And, well, he has a lot of patients that are waiting to be traded. Mm. We're heading to Parish, and that is the name of a place. Have we been to Parish before? No. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, not as in this campaign. I don't In your backstory, maybe, but as far as this campaign, no. I've been all over the place. I'm, I'm a traveling bird. Yeah, I've killed all over the place, too. <laughs> I've visited. I'm a traveling bird. <laughs> <laughs> um, where, where are we heading? Where, 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 where is this place, Parish, that we are going? Oh, it's it's the place where Hexel would like to honor the blob and, and lay them to rest. The land of the dead, maybe? In any case, uh, where, where do you all think Eddie is at this point? We do need to keep track of both him and the alchemist. Why do we know where Eddie's going to Vania? Well, because didn't we get something at the end of the last episode saying that something's in Vania? Yeah. I think they, they, he might have said he's going to Vania. Hmm, Vania, interesting. Maybe Eddie has the alchemist again? Perhaps we should go to Vania and we'll find Eddie and he'll lead us to the alchemist. Then why are we going to Parish? As you ask that question, you hear uh, a cat hiss and growl. And suddenly Jacques leaps from Matid and jumps out of the half-open window. Whoa! Blimey! Was that your cat? Matid goes out the window. (laughs) Matid jumps out the window immediately. Jacques and Matid have both jumped out the window. Oh my, perhaps you should help your friend. There's nothing I wouldn't do for my own kitty, Opus. Little round, gray-haired cat with his little pointy <laughs> snout. Now, now is not the time for a specific... T- <laughs> little grabby hands and how he's always eating grubs and insects that and like dead an adorable animals. adorable kitty. Tell me more. I don't think a cat has a pointy snout. Are you referring to a different animal, perhaps? He's always hissing and playing dead. Oh, like a possum. Oh, that's an opossum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perhaps a raccoon. No, he, he's a kitty. Is a trash kitty. Anyway, you should all help your friend. Yeah, I'll leap out the window too. What the heck? <laughs> Elga's gonna maybe watch from the window just to see what happens. Because Matit could fly. And maybe <laughs> just pick up Jacques and come back. And I don't know if I want to get too far away. What time of day is it? It's morning. You look out the window and uh, you see Jacques quickly darting for some nearby icy woods. Uh, with Matid and Chip right behind him. Well, it was a fun adventure while it lasted, right? <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah, and just, uh, do you think they're still taking breakfast orders? I, w- I want more blood pudding. I finished I my wanted, seven. I wanted some beans and mash. And bangers. <laughs> bangers? Bangers and beans and mash. They might be getting too far away. Maybe we should go take after them. Okay. How fast is this train moving in this amount of time? <laughs> How far are they from us We're now? We're two miles away yeah. from you. <laughs> yeah. There was a bullet train, so you have an extra 20 miles. To <laughs> yeah, go. God. Uh, yeah, you all uh, uh, presumably, I guess, jump out the window as well and quickly chase after your friends. The Weezer, you know, is shouting after you all, uh, and his voice quickly fades. Don't worry, detectives. I'll meet you in Vania. Good luck. Hello, stinkers. Wanted to give you a quick update as to what's going on in our stinky, stinky world. First off, Stinky Dragon Adventures, our full-length adaptation of the Infinite Campaign in puppet form, is airing now on StinkyDragonPod.com. Don't worry, there are no spoilers for the podcast in this show. It's also our biggest, most ambitious project to date, and so far, it's going great, at least according to all of the comments that people have left. Let me read a couple for you because there's nothing I like more than saying aloud the nice things people said about stuff I worked on. These are seriously amazing. Can't wait to see more. That was absolutely beautiful. Oh my God, this is hands down the best show ever. Dark Crystal meets D&D. Wow. That was the greatest video I've ever watched. 
the greatest video they've ever watched. Uh, take it from them, not me. Go check out Stinky Dragon Adventures at stinkydragonpod.com. It's free. But that's not all. We have a brand new series called Show Me the Magic, the making of Stinky Dragon Adventures. It's an exclusive behind the scenes look with me and Blaine, who wrote and directed the show, along with various crew and the cast. And by that, I mean the puppets. Yes, we have real conversations about how we made the show with Bart, Gum Gum, Mud, Kyborg, the whole gang. Show Me the Magic is available exclusively for our first patrons who support our show. What is a first patron? Well, if you enjoy Sticky Dragon Podcast or Sticky Dragon Adventures, you can support us directly by becoming a first member at stinkydragonpod.com slash first. And you get access to several perks, including ad-free episodes and an ad-free podcast feed, Second Wind, our other first exclusive bonus show where we deep dive into every episode episode of Stinky Dragon Podcast right after we record it and answer community questions. First members also get access to monthly subscriber events such as live streams and Discord events and exclusive merch and more. December's first live stream is a white elephant gift stream between the Groteth characters. So join Elga, Barney, Chip, Mateed, and Gus as they exchange gifts for the holidays exclusively to first supporters. Mark your calendars for December 15th at 12 p.m. at roosterteeth.com slash live. Merch! Go get your Sticky Dragon merch. We got new shirts. We got a gum gum enamel pin. We got Bart enamel pin. We got a Sticky Dragon emblem pin. We got wrapping paper. I didn't even know we had wrapping paper. And guess what? A new kiteboard shirt coming out December 8th. Holiday deals all going on. December 13th is your last chance to buy merch and have it arrive before Christmas. And we have a ton of deals happening throughout the rest of the year. Buy one, get one free discounts, all available at store.roosterteeth.com. And if you're on social media, interact with us at the Roosty Discord. You can talk with friends and fans of the show directly. First members can submit magic items, NPC names, etc. Go to bit.ly slash stinky discord to join. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all that at stinky dragon pod or join us on our Reddit at our stinky dragon podcast. What is something that works so well it feels like magic? What comes to mind to me are things like uh, noise canceling headphones, cars that drive themselves, and of course, selling with Shopify. In case you don't already know, Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, do we just hit a million dollars stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Shopify makes it easy for you to show up exactly the way you want to. You can customize your online store to your style with gorgeous, flexible templates and powerful tools. Plus, no matter where you're selling, Shopify has you covered from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. And once you start selling, Shopify makes getting paid simple by instantly accepting every type of payment. I have so many friends who started businesses and they all use Shopify. Maybe not at first, but eventually they all figured out this is the best system. It just works. It's easy and it really helps your business grow and it works for all sizes, small, big, medium, and tiny. So go sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash dragon, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash dragon now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash dragon. Websites nowadays are full of third-party trackers that analyze your traffic to find out what you do online. It's really creepy. The reality is that what you do online is your business, and that's why picking a VPN that will keep your browsing data private is crucial. Luckily, NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the market that defends you from everyday online cyber threats like malware and trackers before they can harm your devices. And as opposed to other VPNs on the market, NordVPN has a no logs policy, meaning they don't store your browsing data and sell it for profit. They have over 5,800 servers in 60 countries and you can connect up to six devices with one click to keep all your devices safe when you're browsing the web. Plus, NordVPN's dark web monitoring continuously scans dark web sites to make sure your account information isn't leaked to dangerous sites. If it finds anything, you're immediately alerted so you can take steps to protect the vulnerable account. I've tried several different VPNs and I'm telling you NordVPN is great. It's incredibly fast. You don't even realize it's on and it protects you. It's crazy to me to think that I used to get on the internet without having a VPN. I don't do that anymore. 
NordVPN's threat protection is also great because it blocks ads for a smoother browser experience and it scans files you're downloaded. It just, it does everything. So go grab the exclusive NordVPN deal now. Go to nordvpn.com slash stinky and get extra subscription time. Try it risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. It supports our show. That's nordvpn.com slash stinky. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring our show. Being in the grocery stores during the holidays is like being stuck in a maze. And don't get me started on trying to pick out wine. I don't even know how wine works. I think it's grapes, but I'm not entirely sure. Between all the people, the giant selection, and my very limited knowledge of wine, I typically end up just grabbing whichever bottle has the coolest cover. And let me tell you, that does not always mean the best tasting wine. But with First Leaf, they take the stress out of finding new wine. First Leaf is the wine club that sends me a personalized shipment of bottles that are based on my unique palette right to my door. All I have to do is go to First Leaf's website, answer a few questions about my likes and dislikes, and their expert team will select a customized assortment of world-class wines based on my preferences. And after you've tried each wine, you can rate them so that First Leaf can send wines based on your feedback in the next shipment. Plus, all First Leaf wine is priced 30% lower than what you'd pay at a wine store. And every selection is backed by First Leaf's 100% satisfaction guaranteed. I did this, I filled out the thing, it's great. I didn't know anything about wine, but they sent really good stuff. And you know, it made Thanksgiving so much easier because I brought all this wine and it all tasted great. I contributed, you know, to my family. I felt like an adult, not someone who just skins potatoes in the corners because mom says so. I brought wine and it was good. And seriously, there's nothing better than opening the door and finding a box of delicious wine. I mean, that's just really cool. You don't have to carry it. It's just there. So go find the wine you'll love this holiday season with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash stinky to sign up and you'll get your first six handcrafted bottles for just $44.95. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F.com slash stinky. Tryfirstleaf.com slash stinky. Six bottles, $44.95. Seriously, could not recommend them enough. When you say morning, is it like early, early morning, like dim light morning or like? Uh, We'll say mid morning, not dim light. No. Okay. Before long, you all are surrounded by barren trees and a thick haze of mist washed out by an overcast sky. So, you know, you all have to navigate the woods, track down Jacques and find them perhaps along the way. Maybe if you have any new abilities at your disposal, you can find Jacques as soon as possible. I mean, uh, possible. <laughs> possible. <laughs> good, good. So yeah, uh, Diff, I don't know if anybody has new abilities or has any ideas on how you're going to try to track down Jacques. You know, I, I can go first because, you know, I just don't know what it's going to do, but I want to share with the class what Chipani has to bring to the table. Going to level six, I have chosen two or more skill proficiencies. And I have decided upon intimidation because I feel like sometimes I'm too much of a Mr. Nice Guy. (laughs) And I I like sneaking into people's ears and saying, hey, I'll kill you. Because I think that's fun. And then I also got sleight of hand. So I'm I'm even better at stealing stuff now. Ooh. I don't know if I should intimidate the cat or steal the cat, but those, that's what I got. (laughs) (laughs) that's that's how chip approaches every situation it's either intimidate or steal those are the two tools in his toolbox and he's going to use them every chance he can yep are we like near the cat no the cat has disappeared from your sight now so you have to try to figure out how you're going to um to find shock Mm. okay in a moment of concern for metid's favorite uh being in all of this world Matid manages to. But I uh, stayed on the train. Uh, <laughs> this, this is this is internal. This is internal, Matid. This is not a a Barney conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Matid casts Visage of the Astral Self. Matid has has evolved in their monastic traditions, and uh, now as a bonus action can cast Visage of the Astral Self, which comes up with a bunch of stuff. It's kind of the upgraded of um, the arms of the Astral Self. I'm I'm finding all my Astral Self as I go. But what this specifically gives me a few things. It gives me Astral Sight. I can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical to a distance of 120 feet. If I were to get like fly up for a vantage point, would that give me any sort of uh, like help with looking into this like misty, difficult to, to view area? Sure, why not? Okay, so can I see 
the kitty. Is there anything else that you would want to use? Like, I see, I see that there's other aspects sure. of this about, as well. Sure. Yeah. Like, I'm, I, Matita is like perplexed as to why the cat decided to exit the train at such an inopportune time. I also get advantage on insight checks. Could I maybe check for insight on why that might have occurred? Is, would, would insight be a part of that? Yeah, I think this would be more like almost like animal handling since it's a cat, well, you know? I'm a bird. You're Eric Hochran. Yeah. Yeah. Is it animal handling, animal handling, animal handling? So it's just animal to animal, so it's insight, is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good try. Sure, we'll say, we'll, 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 we'll roll with it, why not? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, obviously your vision and your, you know, this astral sight, and, you know, you're trying to figure out the motivations behind the cat are, are going to help you quite a bit. So first of all, let's just roll, I guess, like, a, let's call it a survival check with advantage to see if you spot Jacques' tracks. Okay, that's a nat 20. Ooh. 23. No point in even rolling the other one then. No. You know, when you take to the air, you see some paw prints in the frosty soil leading in a, a one of the directions. So you know that Jacques must be just a little up ahead. Make a, a an insight check uh, with advantage because of visage of the astral self. It's 24 with advantage. You've, you've had Jacques a decent amount of time now, but you've never seen Jacques behave this way in the past. Was it fear or was it, what, what, what was the, what was the startle? Like, wh that's what, what I'm curious about. It doesn't seem like it was fear. It seemed like Jacques was intent to do something. Nothing on the train scared him and made him run out. It seemed, it was more like he was uh, motivated to do something. Gotcha. Okay. Then what I do with this information of seeing the tracks is I use the other part of Visions of Astral Self and I use Word of the Spirit and I can speak directly to a creature within 60 feet, making it so only that creature can hear me. Or, or I can alternatively amplify my voice so that all creatures within 600 feet can hear me. And I, I relay this information to my party that um, while I'm still Overwatch. Ooh. You all hear the, I assume you're doing the 60 foot one or are you doing the booming 600 foot I'll one? Do, I'll do the booming 600 foot one so that all three party members, because I think we've we've determined that Elga and Barney leapt. Yeah, you, you all hear like yeah. uh, a booming <laughs> Matid voice from overhead <laughs> uh, relay That's the cool. direction Jacques is running to you. Chris was trying to be like nonchalant about it. I was like, Chris, do you want Mati to be a friend or do you want to be catty? <laughs> <laughs> you can't have it both ways, my friend. <laughs> so now the group kind of generally knows which way. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. I've pointed yeah. you guys towards where the tracks are. Mati, can we get you like your, your loud booming voice explaining to the party which direction to go? I was about to do like a bird sound. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I see where the cat is. Jacques, Jacques' tracks are that way. Please find my kitty. Oh my God, I can hear it's so loud. Can you be more specific with that way? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, how about I, I throw my uh, my spear of superior baking and make it explode with uh, wheat chaff as a Ooh. direction for them to go. Oh, like a flare! Nice. Like, like, like a flare! flare. Yeah. Like a flare! Uh, a flare pretty. of wheat. Yeah. And do we do cool. me and Barney see that? Yeah, yeah, you all see that. Everyone make me a perception check. 16. 11. 14. 10. <laughs> you, you, I've never heard someone so excited with such a bad roll before. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, you rolled a 16. You hear like a rhythmic thumping coming from the direction that Matid pointed you all to go into. I investigate. Chip leads the way through the forest. Uh, and after, you know, going through a little bit of brush and some trees you find a humanoid with an axe chopping away at a tree oh he seems somewhat startled uh as you all approach whoa oh i uh, didn't expect anybody out here i know this i know this guys watch this i go up and i say show us where the cat is show us where the cat went i'm intimidating you right now where the kitten go it's just a giant vein poking out of chip's forehead <laughs> yeah make a make an intimidation check and I think with my ability, oh my God, that's a 23, but I rolled a 13. I have plus 10 on intimidation. The uh, lumberjack begins, uh, he, he puts his ax between you and him, not in a threatening way, but like he's trying to hide behind the ax, like, <laughs> oh, don't hurt me. <laughs> and he shrinks away. Like, oh, I, I, I saw a flash of orange run in that direction. And he points a little to the south. Okay. Uh, I, I, didn't, I don't know if it was a cat, but maybe. And with my new abilities, I, I have proficiency with intimidation and sleight of hand. So then I shake him down and I say, give me 
me all your stuff. I need my tent. <laughs> and I, I use a slide of hand to steal from this lumberjack. This is going to be our next little Jimmy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> make us. Hey, guys. Make chip a slide turn. Hand. Chip <laughs> turn. <Yeah. laughs> if it's a, a six plus eight for 14. I, what is what, what is my character stuff entail? What does it even mean? Mike is calling it an overt of hand because you're not. There's nothing slight about it. <laughs> it's it, at sixth level. Choose two or more of your skill proficiencies or one more skill or proficiency in your proficiency with these tools. You can your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses either of the chosen proficiency proficiencies. So did I just get did I just double that and I didn't? Do I have to do that manually or is it do it? Is that why your intimidation is plus ten now? Maybe. I think that's why. It's automatic. Great. You can tell because on the character sheet, thanks, Micah, on the character sheet, you can see it's got like the dot filling it in, showing you're proficient, and it's got a circle around it showing that it's <gasps> doubled. That's what that means. Ooh. Yeah, like your other ones are just dotted, but those are circled. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I, sh I shake him down. You shake him down. A little bindle with some hard biscuits <laughs> is in one of his pockets, and a small coin purse filled with seven silver okay. is in the other one. And then I, I grab him and I say, you haven't taken a break in a while, I can tell. Eat these biscuits in here, take this. And I give him five silver pieces. <laughs> his own five silver pieces? No, I give him my, I give him five oh. of my own silver pieces for, for his troubles. Oh, he's so nice. He goes, oh yeah, just please don't hurt me. I'll eat all the biscuits. He begins shoving the biscuits in as fast as he can into his mouth. He's like, oh, no, no, no. like he, all the moisture has been removed from his mouth now. And he's just like, he tries to talk and dry bits of biscuit are coming out. Oh. Have a lovely day. Good day to you, sir. And I, I run towards Jock. Before we leave this area, could I actually, you said he's right by a tree. Yeah. Can I use one of my new abilities, which is bestial soul. I get to okay. choose basically an ability that I have now, which is climbing. I chose climbing. Okay. So I gain a climbing speed equal to my walking speed, and I could climb difficult surfaces, including upside down on ceilings without needing to make an ability check. Oh, just like Twilight. Nope. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know anything about Twilight. <laughs> it's not, me, me nobody neither. does that in Twilight. <laughs> I just gotta be clear. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe I climb this tree, I go to the top, and I just look and I see if we could oh. see Jack from oh, anywhere. Oh. Sorry, yeah. to be clear, they do climb a lot of trees in Twilight. I'll at least say that. I was thinking more like <laughs> the ceiling, like, crawl thing yeah. that I can't wait for Elga to do to really scare somebody. Like Spider-Man. Yeah. I was thinking more like uh, Lionel Richie dancing on the ceiling. Um, that's an old man reference for all of uh, all of your parents who are listening. Ceiling. Is he related okay, yeah. to Richie Rich? Yes, actually. Cool. You don't have to roll anything to climb, right? You just do it. I just do it. Elga, in almost a very feral manner, begins scampering up the tree super quickly, way faster than you uh, you think you'd, any so of you would be able to do So fast you think I'm it. just hovering up the tree. <laughs> Can we get some uh, efforts of how it sounds when Elga's going up the tree? <laughs> feral. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not very feral, but it's very Elga. Elga, you climb up and you begin scouring the wilderness looking for any signs of Jacques. Roll me a, uh, once again, we'll call it a survival check. Did you know that, um, you know, big trees are kind of like broccoli? <laughs> <laughs> what? I love, oh, I love I hearing Elga say broccoli. Was that, uh, wait, was that from the show or Second Wind? Why is Blaine confused? It was the show. I, I was talking about the color green being oh, broccoli. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Really? In, second <laughs> win, in second win, Blaine, Gus said his, we were talking about our favorite moments from the episode, uh, and he said his favorite was when Barbara said broccoli and Elvis Broccoli? Voice. <laughs> broccoli? Um, roll it again. I, I don't know if I said it. You're supposed to roll with advantage because you have the, the high ground here. Uh, 19 with advantage. Nearby, you see uh, a patch of orange fur that got like caught in a bush heading off in the southerly direction. Okay. Could I go back down and then tell everyone the place I saw it go? Yeah. And so I guess you all begin scampering off in that direction. Mm -hmm. The only sound you hear is the knocking of the lumberjack's knees against each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just the sound of a little bit of urine. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yellow snow. What flavor is yellow, everyone? Gross. You uh, continue to, you hopefully, you presume, close the distance with Jacques. Okay. Barney, you got any abilities that you want to flex on us there? Yeah, Barney, what you got, Mr. Level 6? Mm. It's does I'm trying to I can't. Okay, you, you can just make me a survival check if you want, Barney. Well, what's the weather like? 
it's cold, dry. There's a little bit of snow on the ground. And is it like, like are we under, are we in a forest? Yeah, very, uh, lots of vegetation. Is it dimly lit? Yeah, it's still, you know, it's morning and, you know, it's like I said, it was mid morning, but you are under like a canopy of a bunch of trees. So, you know, not a lot of sunlight is making it down. So it's not directly overhead yet. Okay. Barney sees Elga scamper up the tree and he tries to do the same. He's like, mm-hmm. even though we already saw where it went. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, he's a little delayed. Uh, and then he, <laughs> he floats up after Elga and flies up. Ooh. Steps of night. As a bonus action, when you're in dim light or darkness, you can magically give yourself a flying speed equal to your walking speed for one minute. You can do this Whoa. three times to regain all extended uses when you finish the long rest. So Barney, while trying to uh, climb up the tree, he finds himself flying up the tree. Mm-hmm. And it's like, where did the cat kitty kitty go? It's pretty much the same thing, climbing, flying. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, he flies off after the cat. Now, is this, the is this a, a spell that you've assigned because of the long rest, or is this a new level six thing? Because I have theories is, as to what's going on here. That is a um, ability of a twilight cleric. So is that the is that a level six thing you've been able to? It's a level six. Yeah, it's a level okay. six ability uh, uh, that a twilight cleric gets at level six. If it's dim light, then uh-huh. they can use the twilight to like float through yeah. the the. Uh, I thought you had secretly multi-classed under our noses. No. Us. <laughs> no, no. As, as clerics level up, they gain a- access to more domain features within their, like, whatever domain they worship. It's it's not unlike the monastic tradition that I, I automatically, going to six, this is what happened. Uh, and so right. automatically, his being a cleric went to level six, and this happened. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you begin uh, floating up a, a, a tree trying to figure out where Jacques went. Mateen, let go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think let go. carrying him up? We're all just down there going, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> Make a survival check with advantage, please, Barney. 15. While, uh, you know, you're floating up, presumably trying to swat at Mateed above you, who's not really there, to let you go, <laughs> you hear a meager mew in the distance. <laughs> and you know that Jacques must be nearby. Ah, the most rare Pokemon. <laughs> I also wanted to just provide context from the perspective of the lumberjack. Uh, a giant bird person flew overhead and started yelling. A man came in, robbed him, yelled at him, and then paid him. A little girl <laughs> like tore up a tree like a little beast, and then an old man just floated off into the sky. <laughs> this, this guy probably thinks that the Matrix is, is collapsing on itself or something. He's like, man, he shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have eaten those wild mushrooms he picked earlier that morning. Exactly. Yeah. What, what were you saying, Gus? Yeah, you hear some meager mewing in the distance. Mew. And you know, you know Jacques must be nearby. This way. And then Barney points and then flies that direction. <laughs> <laughs> we just see Barney fly off. <laughs> uh, okay. It's Princess Leia in that one Star Wars movie. <laughs> She's gonna uh, <laughs> you travel on further and quickly pick up cat tracks that lead you to the edge of a tree line. Amidst the mist, you make out a feline silhouette and the sound of purring. Jacques turns to you, Matide, and rubs against your leg. He offers a mew, but then begins walking forward, leading you further away from the woods and into the haze. Further into the fog, you come upon strange monolithic stones standing in a line, each one marked with etchings. But just as you get close enough to read them, the ground beneath you gives way. Everyone make a dexterity saving throw. Whoa. 15. Was I able to see this so I could do an advantage? Yeah, you have. Uh, your danger sense would work, yeah. 10. 10. 17. Elga, you're the only one who uh, who successfully avoids it, but everyone else falls into a, a hole in the ground. Wait, I'm flying. Oh, not you then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chip and Matid stumble into a hole in the ground. I fall into a hole in the ground? Do you stop yourself? Yeah. Chip falls into a hole in the ground. <laughs> oh, no, I got chip codes that make this, uh, worse than two. I have that flying carpet from 10 episodes ago. <laughs> That was returned. Chip takes four points of bludgeoning damage as he falls. Aww. And Jock begins mewing incessantly, and a faint galloping silhouette quickly approaches. A shadowy steed swiftly stops just short of the hole. A wispy rider sits atop the stallion wearing a double-breasted gray coat with a blazing jack-o'-lantern for a head. <gasps> oh, Deadless Horseman! Oh my 
Bonjour. It would seem you nearly made a grave mistake. Or perhaps you were on the hunt for your own demise? <laughs> no matter. Allow me to be your host in the city of ghosts. Bienvenue and welcome to Parish. This is wonderful. That's, that's, this is like going to Austin, Texas and being greeted by Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> it's the city of nights, Parish. I also like how they're both just talking to each other in a French accent rather than talking to each other in French. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like having our Between the Tales episodes like this. Uh, get a little bit of fun, a little fun. bit of role play, and uh, get to get to show off some new some new uh, abilities that everyone has. Like my climbing. Yeah, before we wrap up, what what other things did you guys get that we might not have gotten to? I'm curious. I bet you there's more, or maybe there's more. I don't know. I don't know much. I could just like run through mine real quick. Yeah. So obviously my HP increased. Sure. Um, which is great for being a barbarian. And then I got that uh, bestial soul. I picked climbing. I also had the option to pick swimming and jumping. But uh, I felt like the, the climbing one felt the most versatile. Climbing comes in handy. Yeah. As someone who used to be able to turn into a spider. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And then the other thing, I think the only other thing that changed is I have another rage slot as well. So I could rage up to four times now per rest. That's good. Nice. Elga got angrier. Yeah. Yes, and that's only going to get worse. It's the opposite of anger management. How about you, John? Yeah, biggest thing was the visitors of Astral Self, but I also got key empowered strikes, which basically means my unarmed strikes are now magically based. So anything that is uh, resistant or immune to physical strikes, uh uh-uh, Gus, you got to take the full damage now. Uh oh, like a phoenix. I got magic feet. And then visited at yourself. And then I got that. And then I think that was about it, other than some HP increase. Yeah, not that, that, that's about it. Not a ton happens at six. You get to move a little faster. Oh, that's right. I got a new key point, another one, another key point, and I got more unarmored movement. I increased by 15 feet, so I can move even more. Wow. That's pretty significant. Yeah, I can fly 65 feet now. Oh, nice. Wow. I got an extra channel divinity for every long rest, which is either turn undead or twilight divinity, which is the thing that gives everyone temp HP. I also got an extra third level spell slot. And then last, I got the divine domain feature, which for me is that like night flying, twilight flying steps of night, steps of night. Uh, And I can do that three times per long rest. So I can fly for a minute, three minutes a day. Only, only it has to be like dim light or darkness. So it's like, oh, that's what, that why like, you asked what, what time, time of day is it? <laughs> yeah. We could, is that an auto proc or is that a bonus action? Or No, no, I have to. Yeah, it's a bonus action. Okay. Mm. I was just curious. The, 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 the apl- applications of that in combat, I was curious. Yeah, it's a bonus action and then it lasts for one minute. Mm. Copy, copy. It's pretty cool. Chip only just got that their expertise on intimidation and, and did sleight of hand. But, you know... I'm not going to be a baby about it. I know that, you know, the, 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 like the rogue classes start pop- popping off sooner or later. And until then, I'm just going to enjoy the role play, you know, because I had my time as Kyborg in the, uh, the action combat. That's okay. I like how you're doing it all as Chip. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see Chip being able to actually make some successful roles in these role playing scenarios since I don't have much charisma as Matisse, so it's uh, or or intimidation or anything like that. The Riz. Oh, yeah. I got the Riz out the the Wooza. Yeah, out the Woo the Woo. Yeah. Wazoo. You know what Wazoo, that's what I meant. The Wooza. Wooza. The Wooza. Yep. Wooza. Whippy and Wooza. Mm. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We will be back again next week with another episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Hey, do you know you can directly support Stinky Dragon by subscribing at stinkydragonpod.com slash first? I want to thank some amazing little stinkers like Moonlight Stories, Tap Call, Deadlocked, 89, Casper, and Squirrel, because they are all directly supporting our show and they get access to great content like Second Wind, our brand new series, Show Me the Magic, and they get to interact with us on our subscriber-only Discord channels and events and more. You also get a discount on merch. It's great, and it helps support us. Please consider supporting us at stinkydragonpod.com slash first. We can't thank you enough for your support, and that lets us make this show. 
Also wanted to shout out some people who interacted with us on social media and Discord and had NPCs named after them this episode. There was Opus, who was named after at Easy of Possum 98, Possum, I don't know, on Instagram, uh, and Inspector Weezer, Commander Carl Weezer 567 on Discord, who was voiced by Micah Reisinger, at Micah Reisinger. This episode of Tales from Stinky Dragon was produced by Ben Ertz, written, edited, and composed by Micah Reisinger, with additional editing work by David Sonia. Go watch Stinky Dragon Adventures at stinkydragonpod.com and tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Awake just in time for breakfast, I see. Well, tuck in. You all must be knackered from the past few days. Anyone fancy a cuppa? I'll take a cuppa. Heck <laughs> I, yeah. I know we'll probably v- they'll record this over with someone else, but I want the audience to know Gus did not do a, a British accent with that. And I, said, it's terrible. You want a cuppa? <laughs> and, and I need one. I need at least one attempt. If, I, if, if, if the rest of us can do that, well, you can do it. You all must be knackered from the past few days. I don't know. Don't make me do that. Yeah, don't make me. Don't make me. Gus does enough.